This video contains everything you will ever need in order to understand how debugging in the browser works. Debugging is basically the process of finding and fixing errors within a script. I will be using Chrome Developer Tools for this tutorial because it has enough features and most other browsers have a similar process. So I'll talk about the sources panel in the Developer Tools that is crucial to learn while debugging. Now for that, open the sources panel in Developer Tools with F12 in Windows or Command Option I in Mac. Or you could also right click, select inspect element and click on the sources panel. Now this simple code right here is what I'll try to debug. Don't worry about the code now, I'll explain it further in this video when it's needed. Now if you don't see the page tab upon opening sources panel, then click on this toggle button, which opens the tab with files. After that, let's click on index.js in the tree view and here's what's going to show up. The source panel has three parts. Number one is the file navigator pane that lists the HTML, JavaScript, CSS and other files including images that are attached to the page. Chrome extensions may appear here too. Number two is the code editor pane that shows the source code. And lastly, number three is the JavaScript debugging pane which is for debugging. Now I'll click on the same toggler button again to hide the file navigator pane and give the code some space. Now next, I'll talk about breakpoints. Before doing that, I'll quickly explain the simple code we are going to debug. In the index.html, I have this simple click me button and an empty div with id of container. The script with index.js is inserted at the bottom. The index.js file is really simple. It primarily has two functions handle click and handle container. The handle click function upon clicking the button ensures that the text within the button toggles between updated and click me. And the handle container simply adds a text to the empty div with id as container. The text within the div is also toggled between an empty and non-empty state within the if condition in handle click function based on the button click. So now, let's talk about breakpoints. First, in the index.js file of the sources panel, click at line number 16. And yes, I mean the digit 16, not on the code. And voila, you have set a breakpoint. After that, please also click on the number for line 21. You now have two breakpoints set. So what is a breakpoint? A breakpoint is a point of code where the debugger will automatically pause the JavaScript execution. And while the code is paused, we can examine current variables, execute commands in the console and so on. In other words, we can debug it. Now in the right panel, we can always find the list of all breakpoints we have set in any file. That's useful when we have many breakpoints in various files. This allows us to quickly jump to the breakpoint in the code by clicking on it in the right panel, temporarily disable the breakpoint by unchecking it, remove the breakpoint by right clicking and selecting remove. Now next, let's understand how to activate the debugger after setting up breakpoints. Basically we want the debugger to pause on our specified breakpoints in order to allow us to view the state of our code at that current breakpoint. By state of our code, I mean the state of our local or global variables, whether they have been assigned or not, and if yes, what they have been assigned to. State of our code also means the function parameters, and basically everything you see in the code before the breakpoint. The breakpoint allows us to pause our application at any moment and look around the state of our application. In this example, the breakpoint is set within handle click and handle container, and to call handle container, we need to invoke handle click first. So the easiest way to activate the debugger after we have set the breakpoints is to click on the click me button. Since this will invoke the handle click function and the debugger will go within the contents of that function. Now, as the breakpoint is set, the execution pauses at the 16th line. Please open the informational dropdowns to the right labeled with arrows. They allow you to examine the current code state. Let's talk about watch now. It basically shows current values for any expressions. You can click the plus icon and input an expression. The debugger will show its value, automatically recalculating it in the process of execution. So basically, if I want to watch the variable text, then I can simply click the plus icon and input text. So now, if I refresh, you can see the text is not available initially since I haven't invoked the handle click function. But once I click on the click me button to restart the debugger, you can see the watch contains the variable text along with its value which is updated. Because the code pauses in line 16 due to the breakpoint we added and the value of the variable text is assigned to updated by the time the debugger reaches line 16. So the watch will now show you the current value of the variable as it is added. Now next, let's understand the call stack. The call stack shows the nested calls chain. So basically, it shows what function is currently being run and what functions are called from within that function. 
At the current moment, the debugger is inside handle click function call, which is called by the click event listener after clicking on the button. And that's why the call stack has only handle click function at the moment. Because the breakpoint has paused the execution of debugger at line 16, it hasn't yet gone within the handle container function. So call stack only has the handle click at the moment. If you click on a stack item, handle click in this case, the debugger jumps to the corresponding code and all its variables can be examined as well. So if there were multiple functions in the call stack here, then clicking on a function would have taken the debugger to its corresponding code and also displayed the values of all its variables. Don't worry, I'll show this moving forward as well. The next dropdown is scope. When you're paused on a line of code, the scope pane shows you what local and global variables are currently defined, along with the value of each variable. When you're not paused on a line of code, the scope pane is empty. Local shows local function variables. You can also see their values highlighted right over the source. In our example, the local has the this keyword. Because it's a normal function and the this keyword always points to the object the function handle click in this case is attached to. So the this keyword is the button element itself. The local also has a variable e which is received as a parameter to the handle click function because of course e automatically gets passed on as an argument to the function passed in add event listener. And lastly, there's also the variable text with the value of updated present in the local, since this variable has been declared locally within the handle click function. Now the script will always include the let and const variables declared outside the function. Since here, I have the variables btn and container declared with const keyword outside the function, they get added within script in the scope. When you declare a variable using var on the top level, by top level I mean not inside a function, it automatically becomes a global variable. So in browser you can access it as a property of window. It's different with variables declared using let and const, they don't become global variables. You can access them in another script tag, but you can't access them as properties of window. So that's why here, let and const, even though they seem to be declared globally, aren't global variables. And the global scope has global variables. So basically the variables that are out of any functions and do not have let or const. For example, if I declare a variable A and assign it a value of ABC, then if I refresh and click the button again, you can see the global scope now has the variable A with the value ABC. So variables declared with var keyword outside any functions are globally declared and come within the global scope. Now the last and important step is to trace the execution. Basically we need to trace the script from one breakpoint to another. We can trace the execution of the script by either clicking on the buttons at the top of the right panel or by clicking this icon here beside paused and debugger. Firstly, I'll click on this icon named resume. It resumes the execution. When the debugger is paused after hitting a breakpoint, the resume can be used to continue the execution into the next line. If there are no additional breakpoints, then the execution just continues and the debugger loses control. Now I'll reset our debugger to help you understand better and then click on resume once. Here's what we can see after a click on it. The execution has resumed, reached another breakpoint inside handle container function and paused there. Take a look at the call stack at the right. It has increased by one more call. We are inside handle container function now. Now I'll reset everything quickly and explain what these other icons present here do. The first one is step, which means to run the next command. It will basically run the next statement. If I click it now, it will go to the next line, which is the declaration of the content variable. Clicking this again and again will step through all script statements one by one. And you can see after handle container function is complete, the debugger goes to the last line of handle click function and the call stack also doesn't have handle container anymore because we stepped through each line of the handle container function. Next, let's understand the step over icon. This icon will run the next command but won't go into a function. It's similar to the previous step command but behaves differently if the next statement is a function call that we created. To demonstrate that, I will first remove the breakpoint in line 21 and then if we compare them, the step command goes into a nested function call and pauses the execution at its first line, while step over executes the nested function call invisibly to us, skipping the function internals. The execution is then paused immediately after that function call. So step over is good if you are not interested to see what happens inside the function call. Next, let's understand the step into icon. That's similar to step but behaves differently in case of asynchronous function calls. For the future, just note that step command ignores async actions such as set timeout that executes later. 
whereas the step into goes into their code waiting for them if necessary. For example, in this set timeout, I'll place a breakpoint at the beginning of the set timeout and to run the debugger, I'll reload the page because that's how this set timeout can be triggered automatically. Now after reloading, I will click on step into icon and you can see the dev tools is no longer paused for 3 seconds. And then after that, it enters the first line within the set timeout and the execution is paused. And clicking step into again will keep going to the next lines. So step into clearly doesn't ignore asynchronous actions. Whereas, if I place the debugger on set timeout again and click the step icon instead, you can see the debugger skips contents of the set timeout entirely and goes to the console log outside. This is the difference between step and step into. Next, let's understand the step out icon. The step out icon continues the execution till the end of the current function. So basically, it continues the execution and stops it at the very last line of the current function. That's handy when we accidentally enter a nested function call using step icon, but this function does not interest us and we want to continue to its end as soon as possible. So it basically skips, or as the name suggests, steps out through the remaining contents of the function and continues execution till the end of the current function, which is handle click, since that's the current function after stepping out from the nested function, which is handle container in our case. Now the next icon is enable or disable all breakpoints. That button does not move the execution, just activates or deactivates all breakpoints. And the last icon is enable or disable automatic pause in case of an error. So when this is enabled, if the developer tools is open, an error during the script execution automatically pauses the debugger. Then we can analyze variables in the debugger to see what went wrong. So if our script dies with an error, we can open debugger, enable this option and click on click me button to see where it dies and what's the context at that moment. So that's all for this video. The amount of information shared in this video should be enough to get started with debugging in the browser. If you want to know more, then I'll attach the link of Chrome official DevTools guide in the description below. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as usual, stay tuned for more.